What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC Vegas 45. We have Derek Lewis, Chris Stockis. Cannot wait for this card. Um, from a fan perspective, this card is phenomenal. I think it's a great last card of the year. From a betting perspective, it seems like a very sketchy card. Lots of sketchy spots. I do personally have three bets we'll talk about. Um, one max bet, though. Um, so doing max bets, um, you know, back-to-back. -back. Last week, hit my max bet with a silver right. Fight won't start round three. And have another one here. The goal is to go um, and finish the year with a with a win. So And then come back stronger in 2022. It's been a fun year. Um, do appreciate all the support in 2021. All the likes. It does help out a ton. Everybody subscribing to the channel. That helps out as well, and uh, all the support I've been getting as well. So I do appreciate all that. But let's talk about this card here. Um, before we do, so if you guys can please leave a like, subscribe, all the good stuff really does help out a ton. Um, and yeah, just check out the uh, the full card breakdown prediction video I posted on Wednesday if you have not yet. And then also did a special end of the year live stream on Friday with Narco Cop, Uncle Weezy, and Liam. If you do want a further more in depth breakdown on why I like which fighter, but we'll talk about. Um, the first fight of the night first, we have Matt Sales, Jordan Levitt. This is going to be my first bet of the night. And like I said, I don't have any bets on this card, but this is one of them. I have the under two and a half rounds, minus 130, and I have one unit on that. Very sketchy fight here, um, but it is a very binary fight where, you know, Jordan Levitt, if he's going to win this fight, he's going to get it down to the mat and, and get a submission here. I've seen Matt Sales taken down. I've seen him get into some very um, tricky spots on the mat against, you know, non-grapplers at times. You know, obviously Bryce Mitchell submitted him, no shame in that, but... Um, you know, Jordan Levitt, he gets his fight down to the mat. I think there's a very good chance that, you know, he can find a submission. Matt Sales coming off of a very big layoff as well, coming off of an injury. Um, you know, lots of question marks on the Matt Sales side. But, you know, if Matt Sales is able to stuff the takedowns, keep it on the feet, I think there's a very good chance he can knock out Jordan Levitt. Matt Sales, an 89% finish rate, finishing all but one of his wins. He has a ton of knockout power. And I just think the striking is, is, is levels above in favor of Matt Sales. So I think someone's getting finished here, whether it is a Levitt sub whether it is a Matt Sales knockout, I have no clue what's going to happen here, but I do like violence. Give me the under two and a half rounds, one unit, minus 130. Uh, Dante Mays, Josh Parisian. Um, I mean, yeah, if, if anything, it would be a, a dog or pass situation. I would never bet this fight. It's a, going to be a very sloppy, greasy, heavyweight fight that probably goes to decision, um, which, by the way, this uh, goes to decision, I think, is like plus 130. I don't hate that, but uh, this is a fight I just want to stay far, far away from. I'm actually going to pick the dog here in Parisian, but it's just going to be a very close fight. Give me Parisian. Parisian by decision, which is actually plus 425, which is interesting, but I just cannot put my money on this fight. Uh, Raquel Pennington going against Maisie Chazon. This is very interesting because earlier in the week, I actually liked Pennington, and I liked her a decent amount, um, but that was when I thought it was at 135. When I found it, it was at 145. Um, you know, my whole breakdown completely changed of the fight because Maisie Chazon, she has fought at 145 before, Pennington has not, and then on top of that, Chazon actually missed weight as well, so I think Chazon's going to be the much bigger fighter in this fight come fight time, and that really worries me for Raquel Pennington. Again, another fight I think is going to be very, very close, I think is going to decision. I think Maisie Chazon by decision plus 250 is pretty interesting, but another fight I do not want to bet on. Um, this is going to be a very close fight, but I'll, I will take the dog here in Chase, and I think, you know, especially her missing weight, this fight being at 145, I think that's going to be in her favor. So give me Chase on for the upset, but I'm not betting it, especially where the line is at now. She opened up at like minus 250. Yeah, if, if I could have got the minus, the, or, or, the, or plus 250, basically Chase on, if I could have got the plus 250, yeah, that would have been great, but she's plus 150 now, and it, that uh, the line keeps dropping there. Uh, Charles Jordan going against Andre Yule. Charles Jordan minus 190. Andre Yule uh, plus 165. This kind of feels like the the Manel Cop spot where Manel Cop he is a finisher. He had like a 94% finish rate. He was going against Zalgas Kazumagulov, and everybody was like, Zalgas is so tough. He's not getting finished. Well, Cop's a finisher, and Cop was like minus 300 in that fight, something like that. And his inside the distance line was like plus 200. And it's kind of the same thing here where Jordan he's minus 200 on the money line. Why is his inside the distance at plus 140 when this guy has a 100% finish rate? He has a, a finish win in all of his wins. Um, and Andre Yule, on top of that, has been finished a lot. Three submission losses for Andre Yule, two by knockout as well. Um, if anything, I don't have a bet on this fight, but it would be Charles Jardin inside the distance plus 140. Um, I don't know if I look at the under. I think if there's going to be a finish, it is going to come from the Jordan side. So I think that's my favorite play if I was to look at anything in this fight. It would be Charles Jordan. Don't love the money line, but you know I like turning that minus 200 into a plus 140 there, especially considering Jordan um, has that 100% finish rate that I like. 
Uh, CRU Banks, Melissa Gano. Yeah, this is a, a very, very sketchy fight. I was planning on potentially pulling the trigger on Eubanks, but I said, hey, I'm going to wait until weigh-ins. I want to see how Eubanks looks. She looked good last time, coming cutting down to 125. I want to see how she looks this time. And, you know, thank goodness I did wait because CR Eubanks not only missed weight, but she looked pretty horrible on the scales as well. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely not betting Eubanks at this point. And, you know, it's an interesting fight because I'm still not sold on Gata. You go back and watch some of her fights outside of the Leonardo fight, and she looks she looks horrible. I know on paper she submitted Carol Hosa, but in that fight she was getting taken down easily. She was, you know, stuck on her back a lot. And, yes, she did get a submission off her back, but, you know, she's not going to submit a legit black belt in CRU banks. And you just look at some of her other fights. I mean, she's getting taken down, no takedown defense, no get-up game, just content to lay on her back. And that's definitely concerning, especially in a spot like this. But you, you Banks looked horrible on the scales. She's now 36 years old. There's just too many red flags on really both sides here to make a play, especially at shock on Eubanks. So I was looking at Eubanks, but after seeing the weigh-ins, this is going to be a pass for me. But I, I will say Eubanks still wins, but it could get very, very sketchy very, very fast. But uh, yeah, if you got in on, on Gato early, I don't hate it, especially after seeing Eubanks at the weigh-ins. Um, that definitely does... Uh, take me off of her so no no bet here for me and no lean one way or another on terms of a bet or a prop uh justin toffa harry hunsucker so this is going to be part of my max bet i have a max bet parlay and this is the first leg the first leg is fight doesn't go to decision and i got that at minus 425 and yeah i was looking to play the under one and a half and i know a lot of people that are that is probably like the most popular play this week and i i totally get it i think the under one and a half hits i think the fight won't start round two hits um you know harry hunsucker in his entire pro career has never seen the second round ever um i don't even think he's been to like like the four minute mark of the first round i mean this is a guy that um, gets in and gets out whether he's winning or losing he's a guy that has about you know two minutes of gas and i will say um, he did look good on the scale, so maybe instead of two minutes of gas, maybe he'll have you know three and a half, four minutes of gas now. Um, but still, this is a guy that is kill or be killed. He said it in his uh, Instagram post, "Kill or be killed." And I, I like that because I do think you know he's going to either go out there, finish Tafa early, which could happen. It's potent. It's, it's it has potential. It's heavyweight fight. Anything can happen. Or you know Tafa is going to use those leg kicks and he's going to knock out Huntsucker for the fifth time in his career. And you can take a look at, like, Hunsucker's amateur career as well. I think he's been to the second round in his amateur career, like, maybe one or two times. And he had, like, like 10 or 11 fights in his amateur career. So this is a guy that, um, you know, doesn't see the second round often. Um, so give me the fight, doesn't go decision as a parlay piece. Um, I see some books have it even better than minus 425. I see minus 400 out there as well. But, yeah, I think this fight ends in the distance one way or another. Both guys, 100% finish rates. If you don't want to parlay that, uh, the under one and a half rounds is now minus 200, minus 210. It's been bet all week. I still think there is some solid value on that. If you can get the fight, won't start round three. I think that's also a decent parlay piece as well. Um, I just like violence in this fight. So give me um, give me violence. I mean, I'll pick Tafa to win, but he missed weight at heavyweight the very first time in history. So I don't know where his head's at. That's kind of concerning. But I'm not laying minus 315 on Tafa. I'm laying the minus 400 on the fight doesn't get to decision, which I like a lot more. But yeah, first leg of the max bet parlay there. Next fight, Hani Barcelo is going against Victor Henry. So this fight could potentially be off. Um, um, shout out to Big Marcel 24. He's talking about how this fight is not on um, the ESPN website or ESPN stats. Um, there's not confirmation that is off yet, but it looks like it potentially could be off. So um, if it's still on, ignore this. But if it's not, then yeah, it's, it's not on. But quickly, I will say I like Barcelos. Barcelos parlay piece. Uh, no props stick out to me, but that fight might be off, uh, which is a shame because I really wanted to see that fight. But next we have Gerald Mearshart, Dustin Stoltzfus. Uh, Mearshart minus 235 and Stoltzfus plus 195. And, yeah, this is one I did not get to in terms of a bet, but I was really eyeing that fight doesn't go to decision, that under two and a half rounds. The reason I did not pull the trigger is because Stoltzfus, he is, you know, a very durable guy. He's only been submitted once in his career. He is a black belt in BJJ. He only has, like, a 50% finish rate. So I think the finishing ability is more so on the Mearshart side. But with that said, you know, Mearshart has been finished 11 times in his career. So 
I still think that under is viable. The fight doesn't go as viable. I just don't love it because I don't know if Stoltzfus is going to be able to finish Mearshart. He doesn't have a ton of punching power, and I don't know if he's going to be able to submit Mearshart as well. I think if there is a finish, it is more than likely on the Mearshart side. Mearshart inside the distance, minus 105, plus 100 in some books. I don't hate that. I think that's kind of where I'd look, but I ended up passing, but I was really eyeing that and the violence for this fight. Uh, Cub Swanson, Darren Elkins. Swanson minus 190, Elkins plus 165. Yeah, nothing I like here. I'm, I'm going to pick Swanson. I think the line's about accurate. Um, I think he's going to be able to stuff the takedowns. Um, you know, we see on paper Swanson has like a 60% takedown defense, but once you look into it, you know, the past, you know, six, seven, eight, nine fights, the past couple of years, his takedown defense looks a lot better. Um, you take a look at who he's been getting submitted by as of late, guys like Moicano, guys like Brian Ortega. So he's getting submitted by the best of the best. I don't know if Alkins, why well, I do know if Alkins is not that that caliber of like a Moicano on the mat as an Ortega on the mat. I just don't see him submitting with Swanson and really having a ton of success, getting him down and, and keeping him down there. I think Swanson keeps him on the outside and uh, picks apart Alkins. It probably wins a decision, but yeah, nothing sticks out here, um, but I am going to pick Al or Swanson. Uh, Mateus Gamrot going against Diego Ferreira. Um, yeah, I like Gamrot here. I like everything about Gamrot. You know, he's a, a very well-rounded fighter, great cardio, great output, great wrestling, BJJ black belt, just everything you want out of a fighter. He has taken a big step of a competition here against Diego Ferreira. Uh, Ferreira is on a two-fight losing skid, and I think a lot of people are counting him out. Um, he did not look great at the weigh-ins. He did make weight, but he did take a while to do it. Um, but, you know, he didn't look great. He is now 36 years old. That's a concern. You know, how's the cardio going to look? You know, what's that weight cut doing to him at this point of his career? Just a lot of red flags on the Ferreira side. I think it's a good spot for Gamrot. Do I love the minus 185? No, not really. Um, I think it could be a, a tad wide, but I, I'm going to pick uh, Gamrot to win. As far as the prop goes, I, I want to say decision plus 165, but I could see like a late finish. Um, maybe like a Gamrot round three could be something to look at as well. Ferreira does slow down like he has, um, especially in his last fight against... Um, against Gillespie, but uh, I'm going to say Gamrot by decision there, but yeah, no bet on this one. Ricky Simone, Raphael, Sun Sal, Simone, uh, minus 275, Sun Sal, plus 235. I like Simone here. Um, as far as a bet here, uh, it'd probably be Simone by decision plus 100. And I'd be really surprised if he was able to finish a Sun Sal. Um, a Sun Sal, very good grappler. You know, he has a solid chin. I know he got knocked out by Cody in his last fight, but solid chin typically. I don't see Simone knocking him out. I just think Simone's going to grind this guy to a three-round decision, take him down here or there. Uh, minus 275, it's it's definitely wide for sure. Uh, maybe a, a solid parlay piece, but I, I don't I don't love it there. Um I'll pick Simone though, but nothing sticks out on this fight as well. Um, a Sun Sal, especially considering he's like he's like 39 year old bantamweight. That's enough for me to you know definitely be on the Simone side here. And I just think he's gonna mix in the takedowns to get that win by decision. Uh, Lamos Angela Hill, yeah, Lamos minus 335. She was like minus 400 at one point, which was nuts. And that line is is still closing a little bit, and and rightfully so. Uh, I'm gonna pick Lamos to win here. I think she's gonna land the harder shots. I think she's. Uh, um, a very good chance she wins that very first round. It's just what happens if this fight gets to the second round to the third because we have seen her slow down as the fight goes on. Um, Angela Hill, she's now 36 years old. Um, you know, she did not look great in her last fight as well. Um, hard to have a lot of confidence in Hill here, but if anything, it, it probably would be a dog shot on Angela Hill. Uh, but I'm not going to get there. I think Lamos probably gets it done. I think she probably gets it done by decision, and the decision line is only plus 115, which is not good for me, good enough for me. I thought we might get a better price on, like, the fight goes to decision um, or the overs because Lamos has been finishing a lot of lower-level fighters, but it looks like the bookmakers are all over that. But give me Lamos by decision. No bet on that one, but I think Lamos does get it done. Steven Thompson, below Muhammad. Steven Thompson, minus 210, below Muhammad, plus 180. I like Thompson here. I think it's a great matchup for him. Uh, Bilal Muhammad, for him to win, he's probably going to have to get some takedowns here. And I just don't know if Bilal's wrestling is good enough here, and especially his control. Because um, hey, taking down Thompson's hard. I know Gilbert Burns was able to do it. Uh, Burns was able to control him as well. But taking down Thompson is typically very hard, and holding down Thompson is even harder to do. And I just think on the feet, it's going to be Thompson here all day. Uh, I know it's a smaller cage, which is going to favor Bilal there a little bit, but I think Thompson's going to stuff the takedowns. If he does get taken down, get back up, and then pick apart Bilal Muhammad um, and get the decision win there. But yeah, no bet. Minus 110 by decision, not good enough for me. And then we have the main event here. This is going to uh, close my max bet parlay here. I have five units on <laughs> Derek Lewis, Chris Dawkins fight doesn't go to decision. Uh, parlayed with Justin Toffa, Harry Hunsucker fight doesn't go to decision. Minus 189, five units there. Um, and I also 
saw this line on DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm not sure if it's still there. I, I think it was. I checked yesterday and it was. But, you know, you can bet um, the decision only. That means if the fight ends inside the distance, it's going to be a push. You get your money back. But if this fight goes to decision, um, I bet Dawkus wins decision only at minus 135, which just seems nuts to me. I feel like that should be, you know, like minus 300 because it's, it's just so hard to see Derek Lewis winning a decision here because he, he barely throws any output, whereas you have Dawkus who's attempting 17 strikes per minute. So what I also did was I put three units on uh, Dawkus wins decision only uh, minus 135, which is just a completely... Um, outrageous line in my opinion but I do expect this fight to finish inside the distance you know both fighters are are definitely finishers both guys have a ton of power um, I don't know when it's going to finish it all depends on the game plan of Chris Dawkins if Dawkins shows up like he has been fighting in his UFC career thus far and his career in the past um, outside of the UFC if he shows up throwing 17 strikes per minute here this fight's going to end in round one um, if he shows up and respects the power of Derek Lewis like many guys do, this fight is probably going to get extended to the second to the third round. Um, but I heard an interview with Doc as he was talking about not letting Derek Lewis dictate the pace. And the, the pace of Derek Lewis is kind of like a slow, slow-paced fight, you know, one punch at a time, if that. Um, I think Dawkins is going to come out here um, like he typically does. Maybe he tones it down a little bit because it is Derek Lewis, but I don't think Dawkins is going to change up much here. I think this fight's going to end with probably in the first round and a half, two rounds. Um, but yeah, I think this fight does finish. I think fight doesn't go to decision as a solid parlay piece. I know main events have been going to decision more often than not. Um, outside of last week, Oliveira Poirier did finish inside the distance, which was sweet. I did have a bet on that finishing and i also have a bet on this finishing as well so yeah that's going to uh close up the parlay five units minus 189 give me some violence so uh, yeah that's it guys just three bets three bets uh I'll go over them quickly again matt sales jordan levitt under two and a half rounds one unit minus 130 um uh, chris Dawkins wins decision only minus 135 three units on that um again if, if Dawkins wins by decision it hits if Lewis wins by decision, I'm out a lot of money, um, but it loses. And then if it ends inside the distance, that decision only, it pushes. So I uh, really do like that bet, minus 135. If you have access to it, I do recommend that. And then also, five units, my big play. Fight doesn't go to decision, Lewis, Dawkins, and then fight doesn't go to decision, Tafa, Hansucker. Let's get it. Thank you guys for a phenomenal year. Again, appreciate all the support, all the likes, all the subs. You guys are awesome. Most of you guys, some of you guys suck, but 99% of you guys are phenomenal, and I really do appreciate all the comments, all that. I always try to reply to each and every comment. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. Um, give me a follow if you want to you know, chat throughout the break. If you have any questions, if you want to talk about a fight in the future, um, you know, hit me up. I'm going to be, you know, not taking any days off, getting right back to it. I'm opening up my website in January. Looking forward to that. I'm going to try to get ahead in terms of, you know, looking forward to finding early bets for next year. Maybe get a, a couple cards in before the first, you know, breakdown and uh, just get ahead of the game, uh, which is always good. So that's about it, guys. Good luck. Um, hopefully you have a good break. Um, enjoy the holidays. Enjoy your families. And we will talk to you sometime in, uh, in January. So that's about it, guys. See you. And good luck for UFC Vegas 45. Let's end this year with a win. See you guys.